So we are ready to go. Great. So welcome to the welcome to the talk about SUSE Studio. I will tell you now how to create customized open SUSE versions with uh, SUSE Studio. So my name is Cornelius Schumacher. I will start with an overview about uh, Studio, and then Daniel Bornkessel uh, will do the demo. And later we will have uh, some example appliances, and Andrew and Jordi will tell a bit about that. So that's where we go. That's, that's the three parts. <coughs> so let's start with an overview about SUSE Studio. Um, who of you has uh, already seen uh, uh, Studio? Who knows what, what Studio is? Please raise your hand. Okay, and who has actually used Studio to create appliances? Okay. So you can learn something about Studio, uh, how it works, what it is, and uh, what we want to do with it. So our vision is we want to enable the community to create customized OpenSUSE versions. We basically want to enable everyone to create a distribution. Um, and we want to make this as easy and fast and accessible as possible. So um, what we are trying to do is we, we want to really make it easy and um, make it possible to create and share customized um, versions of uh, OpenSUSE and uh, software appliances. So um, as I will use the term appliance a bit, um, uh, some words about what, what I mean by software appliance. So basically, a software appliance is a, a combination of an application uh, with the underlying stack of, of software which is uh, required uh, together with the configuration. So it's bundled in one thing, so, so you, you, it's, it's easier to deploy, um, it's easier to maintain, so it makes life easier for, for uh, customers, for, for users, for, for creators, uh, for, for everybody. <coughs> So and, and software appliance can be either a virtual appliance, like, like a VMware image or something you run under KVM, or it can be, um, uh, for example, a live CD, um, which we also consider to be an appliance in, in the context of Studio. So and our vision is to make this as easy and possible um, uh, as it can be. <coughs> and some use cases for that. So why would you want to do that? Um, for example, you could create live CDs. Um, one example is uh, a mono live CD where you want to demonstrate uh, the mono system and how it works with some example applications. So the mono team actually has done that uh, with Studio, and there's a mono live CD which is distributed uh, at trade shows and stuff like that. Another use case would be um, you want to enhance your distribution. So, so you have OpenSUSE 1101, you are happy with it, but uh, you want a more recent version of KDE. So, so you take KDE 4.2, put it on uh, your own um, version of OpenSUSE, and put this on a, on a USB stick and carry it with you uh, as a live USB stick. So that's also something you, you can do with uh, Studio. Or you do demo CDs. Um, I, has, I have as example um, Kraft, which is an application for small businesses to create uh, uh, invoices and, <coughs> and offers. And so um, somebody, the, the author of that made, made a, a demo CD with some sample data, and so, so users could uh, try that out. And this uh, demo CD, which was built with Studio, was I think on the February edition of, of the German Linux magazine. So it's a nice way to distribute a complete stack uh, of software where you know it's working and you don't have to install and set anything up and stuff like that. That's more, uh, more or less graphical applications, desktop applications um, I talked about. Um, uh, you also can do server appliances. Um, for example, you could do a LAMP server appliance where you put the stack of, of Apache and, and MySQL and PHP and all the underlying operating system into one appliance. Um, and then uh, you can deploy that and just put your own PHP uh, um, application on top of that and everything works. And you don't have to care about which version of, of uh, the database works with which version of the operating system and uh, the, these kind of uh, problems you can have. Um, another example would be um, installation images for specific hardware. So one uh, example is the EPC, which is also a real-world example and appliances which already have been built with Studio. So you can put all the drivers you need, specific software you need, uh, put it together into to one bundle and have an installation image. You can just use on, on the computer you make the appliance for. 
Or a more fun example would be a customized distribution for your grandmother. So if you have a grandmother which likes to use a, a PC, you could put her uh, a web browser and her favorite games uh, uh, together with some configuration. So you make the fonts bigger, she can read it. Uh, put a picture of yourself as background of, of the appliance uh, on, on the, uh, while booting and on the desktop and give it to your grandmother as Christmas present. So, and she will be happy, I promise. <laughs> this also works with parents, by the way. Um, or um, not, you, you, that would be an example for, for a distribution um, specific for, for a person, but you can also do a distribution specific for, for a target audience. So could you, you could use an, um, a studio to, to create an education uh, uh, CD. So what, what, what the OpenSUSE Education Project, uh, for example, is doing. So you can do that to address special target markets. Or you do a conference CD, put some browser and some data uh, on, 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 on a CD, everything put together so that it just works. So there's uh, just a lot of examples. And uh, what we want to do, um, and one of the goal, one of the vision behind the project, is that we want to enable you to actually implement all these use cases, come up with new use use cases, come up with ideas and empower you to, to really implement that, use that, build that, and uh, do that without a lot of effort. So the question is, how, how can we do that? Uh, <coughs> Um, our concept is we, we have a web application. So it's a hosted service. Studio runs on our servers. And the, the only thing you need to use Studio is a web browser. So you don't need a big machine with lots of disk space and stuff like that. You can basically use uh, Studio from, from your iPhone if you like. And one, uh, one big focus of, of Studio is um, on, on the user interface. So we, we have put a lot of effort into making Studio a great experience for the user, to make it easy to use, to, to make it fast, and to make it really uh, empower users with which don't bother to, to use complicated command line tools and stuff like that, to enable them to still build their own appliances and their own distributions. So the way we do that is um, the way you create an appliance um, in Studio is you, you clone something which already exists. So you can use some of the ready-made templates. You can create a text-only appliance or some, some basic desktop appliance. Or you can also clone existing appliances and so make uh, uh, variants um, of, of existing stuff. And you can share that again. And then people can work together on, on making, making software better and making better distributions, better appliances. And to get all the software which is in the world into that, not only uh, the stuff which is in OpenSUSE anyway, uh, we have a tight build service integration, so you, so you can import all the, all the software which is in the build service and put it in, into Studio and um, run it there. So in this, um, all together, create some kind of contribution stack. So upstream developers are writing their code, writing a great application, all the free software which is around, maintain that somewhere in some source code management tool. And then you can packages um, go and build packages from that in the OpenSUSE build service, which is a great tool to collect all these upstream software and make packages from it. And then uh, with uh, SUSE Studio, um, a distributor, and that not only means a company doing distributions, but that means a user acting as distributor, can go along and just combine the stuff and tune it, configure it, and put it together to something, a new product, um, 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 maybe a very specialized product or something very generalized, whatever the, the user wants to do, put it together and give it to, to users. So in the end point is, is the user, which is down there, um, if you can see it. Um, uh, who, who, who then can, can use the software. And by making it accessible and easy to, to use these tools, we also want to encourage users to become distributors, to, to enable users to actually make their own distribution, and maybe then move up the stack and also package some more interesting software and other interesting software, or maybe even get involved into upstream development and, and work on improved applications they use. So that's just an idea about the philosophy, how, how we m hopefully can enable people to contribute and to, to uh, work together on, on great distributions. So now, um, just, just a few words about the basic workflow in Studio. We will see more of that uh, in the demo. So, um, but the three building blocks are um, create, test, and share. So we provide an editor to create appliances, to create um, distributions, um, which is, um, um, has a nice UI. You will see that later. 
Um, we have a feature to test the appliance on the server, so you don't have to download it. You, you can run it on our server, you can connect to it in the browser and boot it, um, modify it, um, have a look at it, test it. You also will see that later in the demo. And then we, when, when, you are, when you are happy about your appliance, you can put it... Um, you can share it with other users. So that, this is something which is still under construction. That, that's not yet um, live. So we are working on that, and hopefully you can enable it soon. And that's, that's, uh, so, so when you're happy with your appliance, you release it to the public. And then it appears on our, our shared area in, in Studio, and other people can, can see it, can use it, can download it, um, can clone it to create an own variant of that. So if you see, okay, somebody has created a great appliance, has done some clever tricks, you, you can just use that, put your own software on top of that, and publish it again as an improved or another uh, version of something. So you can, whatever, replace desktop environments or whatever you want to do. So and by this, we... we want to enable the community to, to work together in distribution building and to make, make it really easy and quick to um, yeah, create what, what users actually want. So just a few words about um, the implementation of that. You don't have to read that. that. That's the architecture of Studio. It's a pretty complex system. We use a couple of, of, of different servers talking to each other via HTTP. We have our web application here, um, which schedules jobs, and we share some data. There's some data storage and stuff like that. So basically, it's one challenge of this is to make it uh, scalable in a way. So that's why we use this this pretty modular architecture of, of uh, different servers. So we run run a farm of backend nodes to to build uh, appliances and to to uh, run test drive. <coughs> and how did we do that? Um, Basically, what we did, we put Kiwi on Rails. So Kiwi is the command line front end or the command line tool to build OpenSUSE images, um, like you had if you had in the, the talk before. Um, you heard already about that. It's a command line tool which creates images, which is great for OpenSUSE, and it can output all kinds of different formats, uh, virtual appliances, VMware images, uh, live CDs, and um, different stuff. And our user interface is mostly written in Rails, Ruby on Rails, uh, um, and, and this uh, covers all the, the, the web front end, and we also use it internally as, as HTTP server and to implement um, APIs and stuff like that. As login system, we use OpenID, which is a great distributed um, authentication um, system um, where you don't have to, where you can reuse your, your OpenID account to log into multiple systems. And uh, in, in the back end, we use uh, for, for running builds in uh, some secure way, use, we use KVM, as the, the, that's the virtualization um, uh, implementation which is in the kernel, and we use that to, to run contained builds for security reasons, and we also use this to run the test drive where you start uh, the appliance on the server. And another tool I want to mention is Libsat Solver, uh, which is uh, the great uh, software dependency resolution uh, backend, which is also used by Zipper and Yast. And we also use that to provide uh, the, uh, our package dependency uh, resolution and to provide uh, live feedback about dependencies so users see at once which packages um, are available and what, what, we, what they need. So that, that's um, for the overview about Studio, and now I will give the word to, to Daniel to, to show you um, what Studio can actually do. Kann man das hören? Okay, after Cornelius already gave you a brief overview of Zuse Studio, I would like to give you a brief demo in which I create a KDE4 appliance, um, including um, Firefox. So I'll, I'll select all the software, and then we'll start it and test it and modify it, and then I'll show you what you can do with the modifications um, so that you don't have to download anything. You can do the whole process in the browser. So usually what you do when you do an appliance, you have a set of software in mind. You want to show off to people or you want to um, run as an appliance as a dedicated service. 
And usually those are different groups you, you usually start off from. If you have a server, you usually have a text-based uh, appliance. If you have a um, desktop, you usually have a GNOME or KDE-based desktop. So that's why we provide uh, a few templates where you start off from, so you don't have to start from scratch. But uh, we want to build the KDE4 appliance now, so we start with the KDE4 template, and then from there we just refine our software. So it's, it's very few steps in order to go from here to our um, KDE4 Mozilla appliance. On the first page, uh, you're just welcomed, and you, you can give the uh, appliance a name. And you, give, uh, you get a short introduction from where to go now. So as we start with the KDE4 template, we already have kind of a pre-selection of software, um, which we want to refine now. So we want to add a browser, etc., etc. So if you go to the software tab, you already see like um, repositories and software, all stuff you, you probably know already when you use Yast or if you use Linux. So the repositories that were added in this template are the OpenSUSE 11.1 plus the OpenSUSE 11.1 update repositories. Then we selected um, some software for you. Patterns are, if you don't know, that those are software bundles, so it's, it's, it's a selection of software. And as we selected the KDE4 appliance, we have um, the KDE4 pattern in here. So if you click on it, you, you get some information. You see, okay, it's including KDE bases. And then it has, like, it recommends some software. Like, you get the basic stack for KDE4 here. But if you want to have the full experience, you should install um, KDE4 Internet, Multimedia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if you want to add this software, you ju could just do it by press the Add All button. Apart from the patterns, we have some um, basic packages that get installed as well. For example, the KDM as a login manager. Um, if you want to remove a software, you just click the X button here and it gets removed. And then you get an instant feedback of what just happened on the sidebar, usually. Yeah, I'll show that in a, in a bit as well. So I just removed the YAS2 package. If I want to add other packages now, I can either search for software or I can use the browsing mode, which uh, reflects the RPM groups. So if I go in development, for example, I, I guess I get a list of all development packages. I can search only within development because I have the in-devil here in KDE. If I want to add Firefox, for example, I search for Firefox. And then I add Firefox here. And it shows up here in my software selection now. And um, we do like the resolving, we do on the fly. So apart from Firefox, it had some dependency it needs to fill in. So it just told us uh, I added um, 34 megabytes and the other packages it added as well. Um, I want to have the standard KDE branding, the search branding and KDE, so you can do OR and AND searches here. If I add the Upstream branding from KDE, I'll get a conflict now because you can't install OpenSUSE and KDM packages, and you get instant feedback here as well. Like those packages can't be installed at the same time. And if you want to solve this problem, you just click one of those two links, which removes one of, of the packages, which is troublesome. So I remove the um, OpenSUSE package now. So now we start with the KDE 4 template. We added Mozilla, and for now, that's actually what we want to have. So our software selection is finished. If, there's, if you have, there would be some software, for example, KDE 4.2, if you wanted to edit some, something of uh, that software, that's not found because it's not in our OpenSUSE 11.1 repository. Then you get a message down here. I don't know if you can read it from behind there. But it's like, it wasn't found, but you can search in other repositories. So if you click this button, um, this takes you to the repository page and searches in other repository that we have cached on our servers. So here you can see now that you have the KDE4 devil pattern in, in this repository here, which is from the build service. If the package was still not found, you can easily add a new project from the build service just by providing the name if it's a build service project. Or if you have some other RPM repository, some on the web, you can just provide a URL and give it a name and then add this repository. So if I add this repository here, now go back to the software overview. It should, yeah, it shows up here. 
I get the software changes on the side here because it uh, removed the 11.1 KDE packages and took the packages from KDE uh, factory because they are newer, it always takes the new software, and it updated the search here as well. So now you have a hit for the KDE 4.2 search. I remove that for now again. Okay. So now we, we have actually selected all our software and we can go on configuring our appliance. So we have some basic, basic configurations here. Like, for example, uh, the language, you can set it to like static values or, for example, if you want to do an appliance which you want to ship all over Europe, you can do like ask on first boot, which is the Yast feature. So like the first time the appliance boots, you can set the language and then it, it stays like that forever. So we have that for language, keyboard layout, even for network as well. I mean, the default is DHCP. You can do it manually if you want, or you can just do the ask on first boot as well. Then we have some, some other firewall, for example. You can um, add a new user. We have default user, Ut and Tux, or Tux. It's all pretty easy, so you remove it. So if I go on here, startup there, you can select the, the run level you want to start in. So if you have a graphical system, but you don't want it to start in graphical mode, you can switch it to like normal console mode, or run level three. If you have a server, for example, if you have a MySQL database and you have a MySQL dump, you can just upload it and the MySQL uh, database will be preloaded with this dump. And here at the side, you see again that there's an error now because you said, okay, please enable MySQL, but you didn't have that in your package selection. So if you click the link, then this package will be added. So we try to make it really easy. Uh, one thing I can show as well, if we have an error, we couldn't build later because this build button gets disabled. So we, we try really to um, prevent that you start building appliances which, which will not work later. On the desktop, uh, you can select um, to automatically log in your user. And if you want to start, um, if it's like a Firefox kiosk, Fox, uh, browsing kiosk, and you want to auto start Firefox when you log in, you just provide the binary here. And uh, this program will be started when you boot the appliance. So to memory are some settings when you have VMware, you can set the RAM size to a certain size, but that's not that interesting right now. Um, personalized, you can easily um, theme your appliance. So I did a photo of this room before. So you can upload it, and then you have... So that's the, the grub, that's the boot screen. That's how your appliance will look like later. So it's just uploading an image with one click, then everything is themed. Okay, overlay files, I will come back to those later. And now actually we are ready, we are um, ready to build. We selected all our software, we con configured some basic things. Um, and now we only uh, select the build type we want to have later. Currently we have activated a disk image, which is something you can just put on a USB uh, stick, and this USB stick will boot. We have a live CD and uh, VMware images. Okay. And now when this is finished, I won't build it now because this takes like five or six minutes. So I build it earlier. Um, when this is finished, it looks like this. And then you can, if you want to get a brief overview at first, you can do view files, which gives you, uh, you can browse the file system here. But the um, major feature which really distinguishes, I think, this appliance builder from a lot of others is that you can test drive this, which means it opens another browser window and has a um, Java update running which is connected to a VNC server, and then it boots your appliance here. So this little gap thing, and now I boot the appliance inside. And so you, now you can test your appliance, and this stuff is really, really important. Because once you boot the appliance and, and you do some changes, for example, if you have uh, an Apache appliance and um, you adjust the, the configuration file, for example, you change this file and then later you go to modified file and you get a list of all files that were changed and you can put these files later in your appliance. And this is the um, overlay files tab I was talking about earlier. So what you can do, usually you install software, you have your whole system, you have your directory tree, and after that you can say, I would like to have um, a special file, like this Foston PNG, in my home directory, 
as user and permissions and everything. So that's, for example, when you have configuration files you already have um, ready on your computer, you can just upload your Apache configuration file, put it in the right directory, and then Apache will behave as, as you want it to behave. I'll go back to test drive. Okay, it's booting up. I activated auto login, so it's um, logging into KDE now. Um, that's the greeting. And now Firefox should show up as well. Close this as first. Okay. One thing I will do now, I will create a new file to show you this modified files feature. Save this file. Meanwhile, Firefox showed up, so the auto start did work. <laughs> so, and if you go now to modified files, um, this takes a while the first time. This list of all the files which were modified um, during startup. <coughs> and what you can do, you, you can download the file, um, you can do, uh, or, or you can just view it inline. And. Um, now if I do another, ref oh, it's Mozilla. So now I have to look for this FOSTEM file I just created. Ah, there it was. Okay, here's the FOSTEM file I, I created earlier on the desktop. I can uh, view it and get an error. <laughs> But what the main feature is, I can select this file and say, add this to my appliance. And what happens is um, when I go in Novelay files now, this file shows now up. So I created it in, on desktop with FOSTEM, and next time I rebuild this appliance, it will be at the right place with, with the right user and the right permissions and everything. So that's how you can tweak your appliance. And then uh, some other Features in test drive are you can uh, connect with SSH to your test drive. So if you don't want to type in the Java um, applet, you just connect with SSH, you can do your changes and then go to modified files and see all the changes as well. Or if it is a web application, you can browse to it on port 80 and for 443, the HTTPS. Yeah, so you have the complete process in this web appliance. And uh, building, this is all running on this little laptop now, like this KDE4 build took eight minutes here. On our servers it's a little bit faster. So it's not really long, it's, it's not a really long time you have to wait. So it's pretty quick to, to do the whole process. That's now Jordi um, wants to talk about some appliances he built with uh, Zuse Studio. Okay, so I've done uh, 20 appliances uh, with SUSE Studio and we have a, a DVD. We have uh, one copy for everyone with those 20 appliances. We have um, appliances uh, like that web based, like uh, the appliances uh, he talked about before. We have uh, a Yom appliance, a Moodle, a Sugar Serium, e groupware. We have uh, MySQL appliances, we have uh, Postgres appliances, WordPress. Well, we have 20 appliances. Then we have a, we have a build service appliance also. So that, uh, if you were at the previous talks about the, the open build service, uh, you have one appliance, so you can have your own build service. We also have a appliance, a Lime Geos uh, development appliance. That's an appliance that has the KV models we were uh, seeing before. So you can build your own uh, distribution using the Kiwi. The Kiwi is uh, what we have uh, behind Suzy Studio. So if you want to learn how it works, you also have one here. Then we have uh, some games. We have the, a chess appliance, a Gibrani appliance, and a, a, Mojo, a Mojo Portal appliance. That's a, CM, a, a, a CMS um, done with Mono. Yeah, we have 20 appliances. So. Uh, we like uh, 
we'll giving we are, I'm giving this, this to you now, and um, it would be great to to have some feedback, if you like, and tell us uh, what you think about. There's another thing <clears throat> I asked Andrew to to uh, because he built some some EPC appliances, which I think is pretty interesting. So this gets OpenSUSE on on the EPC. So and this also was done with Studio. So. <clears throat> yeah, I've, as one of many thousands of people, I've got a EPC netbook, and um, one of the things with the netbook is due to Asus's wisdom, they've got some specific drivers that aren't upstream, um, so none of the distributions package it by default. Uh, so instead of users having to add separate repositories and mess around, try and find the right applications and um, software that they need to get their EPC running, um, I decided that you know Studio would be a, an ideal uh, test bed to see if it works. Um, basically, I just chose uh, both a, a standard GNOME template, uh, no, uh, KDE template, uh, added the respective repositories uh, to get all the applications on there. The ASUS drivers, uh, both for ACPI, the on-screen display. Um, I also added the multimedia um, aspects uh, so people could, out of the box, play their audio files, play their video files. Uh, I included the, uh, you know, some of the less than desirable applications like uh, Acrobat Reader um, or Adobe Flash. Um, I've added uh, Moonlight on there. So out of the box you've got um, a netbook that can boot up into Linux and access all websites, media uh, that you need. Um, it took me all of about 15-20 minutes um, to get it up and running. Uh, the test drive feature really does help a lot. Uh, you can get on there um, fire up test drive, you'll see um, instances where you've forgotten to include an application or a package in your install list, something's missing, you go back, add the application, rebuild, yeah, it's all there. Um, you can have multiple versions of your build available, uh, so if you want to keep tweaking but you know your base build's fine, uh, you have that as your 0.1 uh, and then you can move on uh, and carry on adding and you can see the growth uh, from there. And the modified files list again uh, does help uh, being able to tweak configurations uh, for instance hotkeys and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, no, it, it all works very easily. Thank you. Okay and to conclude um SUSE Studio runs on SUSEstudio.com. You can go there, um, see it. We currently run an alpha version for invited users, so this is still under heavy development. It's bleeding edge. Um, so we don't have it publicly available yet. Um, but if you want to use it, let us know, give us your email address, and we will send you an invitation so you can try it and use it. Um, there are also mailing lists, uh, IRC channels. Uh, that's all available from the SUSE Studio um, homepage. And if you want to know more or want to try a studio yourself, go to the OpenSUSE booth. We, we have a demo station there with studio and you can build an appliance, uh, get it burned on, on, on a DVD or uh, written to a USB stick and take it with you to, at home. Yeah, so that's it about SUSE Studio. <laughs> Other questions? So, uh, can I have, can I install uh, like Suzy Studio at my company? I mean, in my own servers? At the moment, that's not possible yet. So, at the moment, it's only a hosted service. So, we run it and it's, uh, uh, it wouldn't okay. be easy to install. So, it's, no. at the moment, it's just a hosted service, yeah. Okay, um, can I make my virtual machines, I mean, the 
the distributions are built private, so they are not public. Because when I tried it, I think you have to, ma you must make it public. Um, no, it's it's your build by default is private, so it's not uh, accessible to to anyone else than you. So and only if you explicitly publish it, then it will be visible to other users. So you can do your own stuff. We are also working on, on a feature where you can upload your own RPMs, so you can, can uh, do proprietary projects with uh, Studio yeah. as well. And uh, can you create the distribution from the novel? I mean, from the SUSE commercial version instead of Open SUSE, from the novel desktop version? Yeah. At, at the moment, we only support OpenSUSE, but we are working on, on um, SLES and SLED support for um, SLES, uh, SLES and SLED 11. So when this will be released, we will enable it in some way. It's, it's not completely clarified how, how this will be done, in, yeah, if it will be available to everybody or only uh, partners or whatever. But we are working on that, and so, so that's also a, a target of, and the goal of Studio to make it possible to build uh, yeah, SLES-based uh, uh, appliances. Um, I was wondering about the, the way you get this uh, new appliance on a medium. Uh, with uh, CDs it's easy, you burn ISO. What about USB sticks? Yeah, USB sticks is a bit problematic. Um, uh, we provide instructions how to do that. So you can do it on, on the command line. We provide instructions how to do it. What we also um, have, it's still under development as well, but we have a tool uh, which, which is able to, to write uh, disk images to, to USB sticks. So that, that's a graphical tool which, which scans your system and, and just offers all the devices you have and then writes it, shows progress. So and it even runs under Windows. So that's, uh, we haven't released it yet, but um, that's a problem. We, yeah, you can see it at the booth. <coughs> OK, um, other questions? No? OK, great, then. Thank you. <laughs>